It was a difficult period because it, it, in many ways he was so healthy uh, and took care of himself and yet he was just constantly ill and we didn't know why. I was ill because my mind was unable to cope with what had happened to me. What had happened, they say, is that Cam was beginning to remember horrible abuse he'd suffered as a child. Abuse that had been completely suppressed. He woke up in the middle of the night and started hearing this voice in his head saying, safe, not safe, safe, not safe, safe, not safe. And fe he felt compelled to get up and start writing that. I had no idea what was going on with me. I thought that my mind had exploded and people who lived in my body were talking about things that I had no memory of. Cam went into therapy and was diagnosed with Dissociative Identity Disorder, or DID, what was previously known as Multiple Personality Disorder. I was terrified. I wanted to run screaming into the night at times. But I always thought that I wanted to save my family. So can you imagine, can you imagine this if your husband uh, was diagnosed with this? Well, Ricky and Cam tried to understand just what it means when, you, when the doctor tells you that uh, your husband has dissociative identity disorder. Take a look. I got my hands on every book on DID that I could possibly read. I had read Sybil, I had seen the movie, I had seen The Three Faces of Eve. I didn't know that much about it. Over the course of his treatment for DID, 24 distinct personalities emerged. There's a core now of about eight or nine who are, are accessible and come out often. There's Pear, who's sort of the father figure, very serene and calm and uh, gentle. And there's Bart, who's very light, light-hearted and, and light-spirited. Some of the younger ones are Clay, who's nine, and Wyatt, who is nine, and uh, Switch, who's 10, Anna and Trudy, who are four, Mozart and Dusty and Gail, who are 12. From the start, I felt unusually comfortable with the altars. I just talked to them like they were whoever they were, whether it was a four-year-old child or an eight-year-old boy or a 12-year-old girl. Dusty likes to cook, so I taught her how to make tamales. And Gail is now her buddy, so she, she takes turns. They take turns. All aboard. So I'll read a, a story to some of the young altars. One will come out, and the others will sort of gather close, if you can kind of imagine that. And I'll read them a story uh, after Kyle's gone to bed. Who's that? That's Wormy. No, <laughs> lowly worm. To better understand his condition, Cam went to graduate school and got his PhD in psychology. He also documented his story in this book, First Person Plural. What I wrote about me was painful. What I wrote about you was because I love you. <laughs> and you did a good thing for me, and you did a good thing for Kyle. And I thank you for that. This is an amazing story. Welcome, Ricky and Cam, to the show. Um, when you first realized that something was happening to you, what did you think that something was? You described it a bit in the tape where you say it felt like your mind was exploding. I had no idea what was happening. It, it just, I was, I was driving down the road and somebody's voice came out of my mouth re and started reading road signs and mispronouncing them. Mm. I knew something was really wrong. And I... I uh, had, had you been sick? This is when you'd had the sinus? Problem? I'd been recovering, recovering. From, uh, from the sinus illness. Mm -hmm. Now it's just starting to feel better mm -hmm. for the first time in, geez, 10 years maybe. Really? Yeah. I thought everything was okay. We, we thought we were doing okay. And how long ago was this? When was this? Five years. Five years ago? Yeah. Okay. So uh, there I am driving up the highway, and I hear the voices that I had always heard in my head, but I just thought that was normal. Mm. I had no experience with anything else. I just knew what it was like to be me. Mm -hmm. 
all of a sudden, those voices were coming out of my, my face, reading the signs and mispronouncing them. I said, oh no, there's something really wrong with me. And I pulled off the road. Actually, I saw a psychiatric hospital. Just, it was just circumstantial. And I tried to get in there, but uh, because I was so confused, I couldn't actually pull into their parking lot. Now, at the time, were you, you were working, obviously, businessman? Yes, I mm -hmm. had a business. Had, had your own business? Yeah. Uh, and doing well in the business? Everything was going fine, mm -hmm. although I'd been really sick, so mm -hmm. I was just trying to... And you all had had a child, Kyle? We had Kyle. He was six at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you pulled over and couldn't get into the psychiatric ward, but when you right. finally... I, you, on page, I think it's 89. Let me find it here. I thought it was... You describe it pretty well. Uh, this is when you're sitting in front of, I think it's your psychiatrist, Arlie? Arlie Morelli. Arlie, okay. And Arlie says, I believe Cam has dissociative identity disorder. Ricky's eyebrows raised, Arlie said. It used to be called multiple personality disorder. Ricky gasped and recoiled. Here it is, Arlie said. So follow me here. Uh, hitching up the sleeves of his sweater. Everybody dissociates. You're driving down the highway, and you space out for a while. Has this happened to you? And suddenly you realize you're at your exit. That's happened to everybody, right? And you say, how did I get home? That's normal disassociation. All people do that to some extent. Uh-huh, says you. OK, DID, he says, is disassociation taken to the extreme. Picture this. A child is sexually abused by his mother for the first time. That's the same mother who feeds him, clothes him, reads some bedtime stories. The child has no capacity to understand or accept this behavior, which is horrifying and even painful, of course, but also sexually stimulating. That's where the confusion lies. How does the child deal with this? His conscious mind essentially removes itself from the present while another part of his mind comes forward to hold the memory of the pain or the feelings about the abuse. And that way, he isn't crushed under the weight of what happened to him and can actually go about his life, go to school, go out to play. When the abuse is repeated, Arlie continued, the disassociative defense is used again. Either the same part comes out or a new one is created. Over time, these parts develop characteristics that are unique to them and separate from the child's, and they all become alter personalities. Ricky's eyes were fixed rigidly on Arlie and says, wait a minute, do you mean like Sybil? Is that, is that what you're thinking at the time? That was my experience. That mm -hmm. was my only experience with it was the three faces of Eve and Sybil. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, how, I thought it was incredibly rare. How could this be happening to us? How could this be happening to Cam? But you had seen it. Had you seen it, seen the different personalities not, show themselves? Not, not really, um, to, to a great extent at that point. Uh -huh. um, the first thing that I saw, and the most shocking thing that I saw, was um, Cam got up one morning, and it was after we found out after having had a, a, a horrible dream, um, a memory of abuse. And he got up that morning, and he walked downstairs, and he walked into our son Kyle's closet, his playroom closet, turned the light on, grabbed a, a, a sketch pad and some crayons and sat down, and I found him in the closet sitting there. Well, it wasn't Cam at all. It was Davy. It was his first altar that actually came out and had memories of abuse and experienced abuse. And Davy was writing some, making some drawings um, that depicted that abuse. And, but I came in and found my husband sitting in the, in the, the closet writing these strange pictures. And it was a shock. It was, it was incredible. That is amazing to, to a lot of us. But uh, does this happen to you often? Do they come out often? Every day. Every day they come out. Yeah. Yeah. We made an agreement with Kyle early on. We knew... Kyle is your son. Kyle is our son. Yes. And he is now 11 and a half. We made an agreement that uh, he was... Number one, our number one priority was to make sure that even though our family was just torn apart by what was happening to me, mm -hmm. that somehow we had to keep a solid foundation and raise him the best we could. And 
I relied on Ricky because I was, it, for me, it was like being in the dragged along uh, the train tracks behind some speeding locomotive. Mm -hmm. I was just barely hanging on. And we, we knew that we needed to have um, as much of a normal life for Kyle as we could. And Clay liked to play with Kyle. Clay wanted to play with Kyle. And that was a problem, actually, because we decided early on not to have Kyle experience too much of the altars. Mm -hmm. It was scary to him. He was uncomfortable with it. He didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. And so we, we made an agreement, actually, kind of a contract with particularly the young altars that they could come out at night and talk to me and I would read them a story. Or when Kyle wasn't around, I would um, go shopping with yeah. Dusty. Because it's frightening for a child to yes. see his father behaving. To see behaving. his dad, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. 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 He used to call that going out. Going out. He'd say, Dad goes out. When da when so he he'd say, Cam, come back. And I would come back right away. Mm -hmm. But there was that discomfort. And children are, are so sensitive. They, they know what's happening. They're incredibly intuitive. Mm -hmm. He would just know it. He'd, he'd see it coming. And he'd say, Dad, don't go out. And I would struggle at, at first. Hi, YouTubers. I'm excited to give you an update about our own YouTube channel. Now you can find new videos every day. They're the kind of videos that will make you look at life differently. They may even make you laugh a little bit. Subscribe to the own channel today, and we'll see you on YouTube.